Hello, I'm the cat toy lady. Hopefully you all can hear me. Last time I had a little bit of some technical issues when it came to the sound, music, all that goodness. Um, so hopefully it's working today and you all can hear me. I have a cute, cute, cute little toy to show you that I actually made a two or three weeks ago just goofing around for the curtain foster kittens that I had. I didn't want them to have anything with too long a string just to be on the safe side. They are crazy kittens. So I came up with this little cherry bomb because they love the mesh tubing. And I have to be very, very careful because that word B-O-M-B, -B, YouTube freaks out. Um, so it's just a cherry. Let's see if I can get the lighting right so you're not like blinded by it. Blinded by the light. <laughs> Sorry. It's been a crazy day. Um, so I figured I would show this to you because I have my wheel video waiting. I need to get some better footage of the cats running on it. Um, my foster kittens that I have right now are being very, very gracious by playing on it. Uh, but it takes two of them to make the wheel move because they're a pound a piece. So um, cat running wheels don't work very well with a one pound cat. Bigger cats, yes, and my bigger cats don't care for running wheels. Um, I did try to take it to a friend's house. Um, that didn't go so well. She was very sweet. Her cats wanted to check it out at first. It still had a little bit of stabilization issues. I ended up adding two more wheels to it. I did have like four wheels to start with. And four wheels, still a little wobbly. I did also add a little bit of some felt to the edge of it. That way it could kind of like rub against it softly without causing too much friction and also help stabilize it. So all together, that worked really well. It moves really smoothly. Um, I, for um, using corrugated cardboard plastic. So like it looks like cardboard, but it's made out of plastic that I got from Home Depot. Two big sheets of it that were like eight by fours. It worked great and I really can't complain so let me just double check here that our YouTube is up and running because my stuff on my end of course is glitching because that's just how it likes to do for me it works great until I go live and then it goes all chaotic so let's see oh yep see there's people in the chat and it's not showing me <laughs> that's why I had the backup iPad see I was thinking. Um, so, hi, Miss Diane. Can you hear me? Please tell me you can. Oh, look, my chat just finally started working. It apparently decided to just come on. You gotta love computers. They never work exactly how you think they will, especially when you're like me, where I'm kind of computer savvy, but I'm more iPad savvy. <laughs> just give me an iPad. So let's see, let me write in here. And see if anyone, oh yes, 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 yes. Okay. So just making sure sound is going. We want that to happen. Look at the cute little cherry. <laughs> wow, when I typed, can you hear me? It just now showed up in my uh, chat. So it's a little delayed. So hopefully I don't miss anything, but Cherry, very cute, easy for the little kittens. My guys are now about six weeks old and they carry it around like it's nothing. And my bigger baby, somehow she figured out, my 17 pounder, how to hold on to it and still rabbit kick this little piece. Um, so I can tell you it holds up <laughs> for sure because she is very flexible for a 17 pounder. And so, yeah, I have a little video I'm going to be showing you because I am not making this live just because it's a bit messy. You need to be able to see up close. It's hard for you to see my angle from your side of the camera. Um, so I had my husband help me earlier just kind of get a quick video of it and I did get the kittens playing with it just so you could have some cuteness going on and I'm going to go ahead and get that playing because that's really why you're here is to see the cherry cat toy and uh cost wise 
if you buy everything in bulk, like if you're going to be making this for a rescue group, you can get 144 balls. They might not all be red. Um, it was $13 on Amazon. And then I get, oh, I think it's like 30 yards or 30 feet. I can't remember. Dollar store. But you'll be able to, uh, these pieces, because you're cutting like four inches. Um, when I was doing eight inches, I was getting 100. So like 200 of the stems for a dollar. And then 14 or 144 balls is $13. So let me just say 13 divided by 144, um, 10 cents a piece if we round up. So for rescue groups, this is like the best thing in the world to be able to get them. You can make a ton of these. They're really quick. They just take the screwdrivers little set from the dollar store. I use the bigger Phillips head and the medium size flat head and it's just perfect. Um, so let me get into my video for you and I'm going to like commentate, like talk over it so you can <laughs> hear me again. Um, so let's see, let's get it going here. Not so much. Ooh, there we go. So this is the materials I'm using, it is a denser bouncy ball. And like I said, this is Phillips head, flat head. They don't show up the best. Um, I cut four inches of the mesh tubing to get this started. And then I tie a knot in the top inch. And then I just fray the little edges of it. That way it gives them something kind of interesting. If you have babies that you think might need a little bit more pizzazz, you can move it down and say like an inch and a half, two inches. That's up to you. But I like the look of it at about an inch. And then all you do is take that Phillips head, twist it back and forth, and it starts kind of like coring out the rubber ball. And you can see I went in about halfway into the rubber ball. An angle where it's not then twist the rope, the mesh rope, and fold it over the flat head. So you're going to press, twist it pretty tight, and then you just push it straight into the ball. If a little of it unravels, that's okay, uh, because you'll see anything that was left over, I just kind of snip off. Um, and then I take the screwdriver and I push it just a little bit farther so those little pokey edges um, don't stick out. So it's not like kissing a beard uh, for the cats if you have a furry husband like me or a husband that doesn't like to shave. Um, and as you can see, it bounces and twists and turns. Um, it really flips and flops and that's what gets their interest. And then as it slows down, it kind of like does this rapid bounce on uh, the ground and that sound just drives cats nuts. So definitely the cherry bomb, <clears throat> the cherry, sorry YouTube, please don't flag that for using inappropriate words. Um, so you can see it's really easy. The kittens love it. I try to get some video of it. Don't, don't mind my baby gate. It's an Amazon box, a big flat one my regular baby gate that would go there, kittens fit right through. That does not keep them in an area. And I need to have adult section and kitten section. So there we go. I used the box wedge between my couch. And if you have a son, he likes to practice karate on it. That's also good. Doesn't stay very well. So let me go back to my screen and here we are. So the cherry, nice and easy. You saw how quick that was. I barely edited any of that. Um, it just, let's see. I can do that little camera thing where hopefully it picks up on it. I'm so bright. I'm like day glow when I'm too close to the camera. Um, yeah, you wanna know what it's like to glow in the dark? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Day glue. All right. So quick, easy cherry. Um, and then back on to kind of why I went live today. I wanted to talk to you about some of the stuff going on. I did want to show you a cat toy because every week I want you to see some type of cat toy, whether it be me talking to people that are cat people, me making a toy, me critiquing a toy that I've found. Um, I do need to know, um, I'm going to just be making some random trips here and there to, 
you know, Target, PetSmart. PetSmart is not my favorite place to buy toys. I'll say that just because they don't really care about quality as much uh, versus cheapness. Um, and yes, they jack up the price a ton. Um, and they sell a lot of toys that just aren't what I consider safe. Um, and that's the vet tech in me. Again, I've been a vet tech for over 20 years. I specialize in cats, hence the cat toy channel. Um, and again, I did work for a cat toy company designing cat toys for five and a half years. So I kind of know about cat toy safety. Um, so let me see how the chat is doing. Mm. Apparently my face recognition doesn't recognize me with makeup on. I don't know. But let's see what, what we can do here. Oh, let's turn the volume down because we don't need that. All right, and Miss Peggy says, hello, good day, and good day to you. Um, so if you missed the beginning of this, um, let me, well, one, take a sip of water. Mm. I have coffee here too. Let's see if I can get you my David Meowy cup. Is this not the cutest cup ever? Um, I had a booth when I was selling cat toys. I gotta go with the uh, coffee too. Um, I had a booth next to the artist that makes this. And she has print. She has lots of different um, cat stuff. Ooh, maybe I, I just completely blanked on her name, but I follow her on Instagram, so maybe I can, like, find her while I'm talking to you. Um, some of the cutest stuff. Love the art. She does do art that is just for you. Like, if you want artwork that looks like your cat, by God, she'll make it. It's all digital art. Um, so she can easily, if you don't like it, if you think that, you know, it needs to look a little differently, or anything like that she can edit it which is the neat part about the digital art she doesn't have to just start completely over and want to strangle you for it let's see don't mind me looking down I, I swear I'm not trying to be rude um, I'm just trying to find her so you know whose coffee cup I'm drinking out of and you can order your own I also have another one of hers that is um, nesting dolls but they are kitty cat faces they're like they had cat faces on them and why can't I find her? I follow too many people, I think. Do y'all have that problem? Um, <laughs> of course, she's one of the first people I ever followed on Instagram. I met her when I was really not using it. I just happened to have it. So she's one of the first people ever. I met her. Oh, it was Catsbury Park is where I met her. Because uh, I just came across their stuff. It's a New Jersey... Um, very fun cat event. Hopefully they bring it back soon. Maybe they'll make me a guest. Oh, I'd love that. Come and teach people live how to do cat toys or maybe just talk about cat safety of toys because God knows there's a lot of toys out there that people try to make themselves that have strings and pieces that like should not be used on a uh, cat toys and it kills me it, it really does it kills me a little inside every time i see these diy toys that have no thought about the dangerousness of the toy especially since it's ones that you know people are going to just leave unattended with their cat um like there was one recently that basically tied cat treat or shoe strings with cat treats for them to be able to chase and chew off and I wanted to bring their neck. Do not tie strings to toys. That just encourages them to eat them. Um, I'm sorry if, if one of you likes the person that did that or um, follows them in any way. Um, let's see. Oh my God, I follow way too many people. Uh, but some of them are so cute. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, like Waruba. I can't. Dude, that is the worst name for having a list. Waruba cat foods or pet foods, I think. But I follow the cat part of it. Um, they make awesome cat foods and they donate a ton of cat food. They're, they just donated pallets upon pallets down in Florida last weekend. 
um, actually I think they finished yesterday, um, my two favorite Chris's, uh, well, Ruba Chris, which is one of their, um, I think he's like the sales manager, head manager. He's the one that gives out the food. And then Chris from Colon Marmalade, if you don't follow them, oh my God, where have you been? Um, I adore both of them. They are both funny, especially together. Um, and then this new gentleman, uh, joined them that I just started following that I thought was really cool. Um, Oh, the Nathan the Cat Lady. Man, my brain is going today. Um, but yeah, Nathan the Cat Lady. I was like, hmm, Cat Lady. <laughs> I like your name. Um, and he was down there with Trap King, who's from my area. Um, so I thought that was just really cool that they were all together and they were handing out food. They were doing TNR. And I'm really sorry, I'm not making eye contact. But... I follow a lot of people because I've met a lot of really cool people from these cat events that I have gone to. Um, so let's see if I can find it. Catman of the West. He's another cool one. And here's my Trap King. One of these days I'm going to stalk him and find him and introduce myself in person. He has played at my booth that I've been at with the cat toys that I designed and talked about how cool they were. But since I was just selling cat toys at the time and there was a front person that pretended to kind of design the toys, which she didn't. Um, yeah, um, I didn't really get to introduce myself. I was just always the person in the background having to kind of be the quiet person, which is not my nature. Um, so yeah, if you ever see toys being sold by a company that looks similar to a lot of the ones that I show, not exactly the same because that is not what I do, but similar, just know I designed them. And I'm on the patents. Well, most of the patents. Some of them were made after me, but. So I cannot find her name on here. I keep going back and forth past it, I'm sure. Um, so instead of me holding up my phone, looking like a crazy woman, just talking to my phone instead of to you guys, how hard is it for them to pull the mesh out? Well, earlier I was talking about my big girl, my 17, whoop, 17 pounder, um, had a hold of the ball with the front feet and was rabbit kicking with the back feet and getting her toes in the mesh and she couldn't pull it out. Um, the way rubber balls are really neat is that they expand and then contract right back down after you pull out the uh, screwdriver. So it makes that, let's see, like if you can see, it doesn't even slide out. Like <laughs> it's not going anywhere. It doesn't even budge. Um, I will say with the previous company we used similar items where we use bouncy balls for making cat toys. So I have a lot of education on how they work. And what's also kind of really neat is when you core them out with the screwdriver, at least some of the bits and pieces behind. So you're not completely getting rid of all, like you're not coring it out completely. You're just moving things around. So when you put it in with the screwdriver, you're putting it into an area that is smaller than the mesh itself. So it's actually gripping on the inside with all the rubber holding on to the mesh. Um, I've, I've never, never had where it came out, out of the mesh, or the, the, the ball, um, when, when using, using the mesh once. And, and I've, I've been, been playing around with mesh at a bouncy ball, like doing three pieces, kind of sprouting out. Um, two years at least. Ever, Ever since, since I started, started this cat, cat toy channel, so I don't think I want two years. years. Um, and, and my cats play with these all the time. You would think, think that the texture wouldn't be very good in their mouths, but they love the fact that because, because it is mesh, their teeth sink, sink into, into it. So, so it's, it's not, cats don't, don't grind back and forth. They just bite down, down and chomp. So their teeth, teeth go in, but they don't destroy the mesh. And then that's the cool part about it. So that's why you'll see a lot of nylon based cat toys that are mesh, even out on the market. So let's see. I was trying to just glance right back through, but I'm trying to answer questions at the same time. And for 10 cents, like when it comes down to it, I mean, that's 
pretty cool and I'm making them for a lot of different rescue groups. Um, I'm making, I made this toy or bouncy ball with the um, fuzzy Chanel, the chunky Chanel um, with a tail that's like five inches we'll say um, with the bouncy ball. I've already previously made it. I'm donating, since I bought bulk of these, I'm going to make and donate the rest of these um, with the fuzzy tail to the rescue group that I work with that I foster the kittens for. Um, minus 10 of them because my daughter learned how to make them herself. Um, she is in third grade and she's at the STEM school, so science, technology, engineering, mathematics, yada, yada, yada. Um, but they are having... Um, Oh, I forgot what they call it. But basically, she had to make something that she could sell to others in her grade. Um, and of course, she wanted to make cat toys. And it, that was one that I knew she could do more safely. I'm still helping her actually push the tails in. But she's trimming up the tails, getting them ready, and then I stick them in the mall. And she's also prepping the mall. So all I'm doing is using the screwdriver. Just because I don't want her to push so hard accidentally that she goes through the ball and stabs herself. I've done that with softer balls. These are really hard balls, um, so I, I, it's not quite a concern, but just make sure that it is secure and I know that it's safe for the people. So she uh, is making 10 of them uh, for a school project, so she's going to sell them uh, this week. And I don't know what she helped like, sell. I think they get like a certain amount of tickets per good grade that they have. So, you know, if they have like A's, they get four tickets, B's, they get two tickets, you know, that type of thing. Um, and then I can go around to the different booths and then find stuff to buy. So that's what we're doing this week. And oh yeah, I was talking about a coffee cup initially because, ooh, I have to just look straight at it. Olive and Rye Cat Art. Um, O L. Ooh, let me put it in the chat. <laughs> I thought I'd do that. Olive and rye, like, like rye bread, cat art. There we go. All right, so you should be seeing them in the chat in just a moment. Um, so yeah, very, very cute cat art, and she does personalize it. Don't mind me sitting in the squeaky chair, I swear I'm not farting. Um, <laughs> just in case you thought it was. But yeah, she does. Oh, I love it. Um, if you are, um, oh, um, a Jonathan Van Ness fan art, or let's see if I can. Oh, come on. Work with me. You can kind of see it. Yeah, I suck at this. <laughs> I don't have my the rest of my stuff pulled up where I could show you, but yeah, she a little queer eye. Um, especially the new ones that are older guys. Um, so yeah, she makes. <laughs> this is for a baby that passed away. Let's see if I can angle it right. I just cannot get this down pat. How many people show stuff off their phone? I swear to God, I've seen people do this, like, normally. And it had not looked special needs. See? Maybe. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> Check her out. Olive and Dry Cat Art. Instagram. Tons of stuff. It's better than me looking like a gifted person over here. A uh, special person. Not really gifted. Um, so, yeah. And I wanted to talk to you all about, I'm going to do my best to get the cat wheel video out. Um, I don't know what, I'm, how I'm going to get the cat on the wheel, unless I just wait for the kittens I have right now to grow up. Since I think my husband has chosen one to be a foster failure. If you follow my Instagram, you'll see that the calico kitten um, has taken to my husband and he to her. Um, and it's really funny because he told me if I foster failed again, like I did 10 years ago, the last time I got to foster, and had time to foster, um, 
he told me if I foster failed again, I could no longer do kittens. Um, but this time it's his fault. So he told me I can keep fostering. I am going to take a little break from fostering after this set. Uh, like I said, they're about six weeks-ish now. They'll get spayed and neutered um, once they hit two pounds. So usually that's a little over eight weeks. Um, and then they go out for adoption. Um, they, it is Per Nation Cat Alliance. Ooh, I think I got that in here too. <laughs> per Nation Cat Alliance. There we go. Um, so my gray, gray boys are going to be up for adoption. I have Jacques who is uh, a gray tabby. Uh, he's one of those that when he looks straight at him, he looks just gray. And then when you see him from an angle, you're like, oh, I see your tiger stripes. And he's long haired and he's super sweet um, and very cuddly, he wants to be with you. Then we have Guskus, who's a bit of chunkier, shorter. <laughs> just what you imagine, Guskus. Um, if you think of Cinderella and her mice, Jacques and Gus. Um, he's happy to cuddle, but he's also happy to go and sleep somewhere else, so he doesn't have to be clung to you. So if you want a boy that's a little more independent, but still wants love, then you go for Gus If you want a boy that, um, is very needy and loves to cuddle, um, and has a big purr box, you go for Jacques. Um, the, she was originally named Cinderella or Ella, because uh, I also have a Cindy, <laughs> uh, so we were calling her Ella. She's now become Ellie Mae. She is going to be a foster failure. I already know it. Um, it really is funny. My husband told me also that the next cat that we adopt will be uh, one that he finds in the river, because that stuff really does happen. Um, some people while diving in rivers and around lakes and stuff like that, do you find kittens. Um, we've seen it, but haven't been part of it. Like we've seen it on YouTube and stuff. So he was like, the next one's going to come out of the river. Yada, yada, yada. And of course, here I am plotting my head. How do I safely put a kitten in the water and let it float down to him? <laughs> um, but then he chose Ellie Mae and I don't have to try to figure that out. It was going to happen one day. I'm telling you. <laughs> My husband doesn't plant stuff, but I'm not past it. <laughs> I did put a fake, um, oh, if you don't know, my husband also has a YouTube channel where he scuba dives rivers, mostly, and other places. Um, one time in the river, I did plant, um, a skull for him to find. That's in the video. I like pulling pranks on him, let me say. Um, so yeah. And the reason I'm going to not be fostering, let me get back onto that subject. God, I'm so ADD sometimes. Well, all the time. <laughs> um, my kidney issues, which kind of shut down my channel all through the holidays. Um, before, the, when they thought they were going to have to do reconstructive surgery, they went in and then they discovered that there was about an inch thick of scar tissue all up and down my ureter which was causing the ureter to narrow and collapse on itself. And it was making my kidney swell up like a balloon. And I was having to get stints put in, like a big straw from the kidney to the bladder to keep it open. And then they put a tube in my back um, into the kidney. So I had a beautiful purse on my side that was full of pee. Um, <laughs> they call it a nephrostomy bag. It's just what every person loves. But I have to say, I preferred that over the stents because those bad boys run back and forth and they hurt and you just have to sit like a lump for months while it's in. Um, you can't really do anything and God forbid you try to pick something up off the floor, you're just done for for the day. Um, so yeah, I have to basically start everything over again because they removed the scar tissue. It was zigzagging the ureter. It was stuck to my abdominal wall and the uh, intestines. Sorry, I blinked for a second. And my intestines. So they had to like peel it off of all these different parts. They found the clips from my appendix, which should be way far farther down, because um, my appendix exploded, walked around, ruptured, 
for a month, and that's what caused all the scar tissue. They found the clips from the appendix up in the ureter, in the top part of it. Um, no clue how that one happened. Um, so they cleaned off the scar tissue. They thought that that would actually fix everything. Um, I had a stint in after the surgery for six weeks of god-awful pain. Um, when you see white when you have pee, um, you know, it's painful. <laughs> that or you have that, I want to throw up feeling when you pee. <laughs> that shouldn't happen. Um, so, yeah, I know that's probably too much information, but God knows I'm not shy. Um, so, I had this sent in for six weeks after the surgery. They pulled it out. I was like a new person. I started making all these videos for you and doing stuff. And then I started getting some aches in my kidney. And I was ignoring them, thinking, okay, it's only been a week. Maybe there's still some inflammation left from the stent rubbing in there. Because uh, it looks like a curly Q on one side of the blood, or in the kidney. And then it snakes down, and then it curly Q's the other direction in the bladder. And that's how it, like, stays in place, is the two curly Q's. Um, yeah. One week of bliss. And starting my channel back up again and trying to be normal. <laughs> as much normal as I can be. And... Yeah, it started aching again and hurting, and then my migraines came back. And by the way, if your ureter is blocked, it causes migraines and high blood pressure. And my blood pressure, when I, the doctor's office told me just to make sure it wasn't blocked block, it was just like, just narrow, uh, told me to go to the emergency room, which is always fun because the emergency room doesn't like me. Um, the doctor told me there was nothing wrong, but my blood pressure was 152 over 125. But there's nothing wrong, and my kidney levels were getting elevated, and the urinalysis was just freaking out. And he's like, eh, "It's normal. <laughs> it's so normal to pee blood and protein." <laughs> Sorry, um, protein's not good, by the way, if you have kidney issues. Well, in general. But, so, yeah, he tried to tell me I probably just had some inflammation left from my gallbladder, which I don't have a gallbladder. And then he tried to say it was just from me eating something wrong. How does that make your kidney hurt? And I can tell you where my ureter is for sure. Like, it, it, I, I know. Um, but, <laughs> again, I got sent home twice, twice from the emergency room with a ruptured appendix. Different emergency room. I learned my lesson, I thought. Um, and one month, they sent me home twice. And then, luckily, I had to have my gallbladder out. And that when they opened me up after a month, they're like, Ugh! And, yeah, almost died. You know, that fun stuff. Doesn't everyone do that? I mean, <laughs> isn't that normal? So, ugh, sorry, Diane. She says she has chronic kidney disease. That sucks. I have to say, um, I'll, I'll go through labor again any old day, um, over kidney stuff. I don't know if it's just because I forgot what part of labor was like or something and this is fresh, but, um, yeah, kidney stuff really hurts, <laughs> like, no joke. Um... I guess it's just a different type of pain. Like, you can't just, like, center yourself and let it go away. <laughs> well, it's not like contractions go away. But you can't just know it's going to be over soon, I guess. But, yeah, so I feel bad for you, Diane. I'm sorry. Um, hopefully I don't end up like you. Um, Monday, what's today, Saturday, two days from now, I go through the whole get data. They do a dye study and put dye up the ureter. Um, to see, I think it's just narrowing because it kind of comes and goes, the headaches and stuff. Like when I hunch over and bend over and play on the iPad all like crunched, I start to get a migraine. Um, and as soon as I straighten out, about 30 seconds later, the migraine goes away and the ache in my side goes away. So I think I'm just like kinking it. Um, so I think it's just like weak and it's like narrowing. Um... So they're going to see what it looks like and how much of it's narrowing. Because if it's over half of it, I just lose my kidney. 
Um, if it's less than half, then I go back through the whole reconstructive thing. So if it's three centimeters or less, they're just snipping out the bad part and moving my kidney. Doesn't that sound pleasant? If it's from three to five centimeters, they are using the inside of my mouth to make a patch. <laughs> um, sorry, I can't. <laughs> Um, to make a patch, um, kind of like patching an old-fashioned tire for the yarder. Anything over five inches or five centimeters, there's just not going to be enough blood supply, and they have to just remove the kidney. They are trying to save my kidney because I do have uh, what's called chronic Epstein Barr. Basically, it's mono that comes back later in life and never really goes away. So, like stress and certain things can trigger a flare-up of mono. Yay. Um, so it, that can randomly attack kidneys and sometimes only one kidney. Um, so if you only have one kidney left and decides to attack your kidney, um, then you have no kidney. Um, and it's a very quick attack. It's not like, oh, it's starting to fail. It's dead type. It, it's weird. Um, and there's no telling if I'm going to be one of those that it ever attacks. Um, it was kind of odd that the same week that my gallbladder and my appendix, appendix just stopped working. Kind of odd. Um, so who knows if maybe since the chronic Epstein bar attacks the GI a lot, it likes to mess with like livers and spleens the most, um, which is the type my cousin surprisingly has, even though it's not supposed to be genetic, but it's extremely rare and we both have it. Um, but yeah, so... I, I don't know what the future holds with it. Um, yeah, the, the dye isn't the best for kidney function, but what they do is they shoot it up from the bladder or the camera out there. That's why they said to eat you, because that's not fun. Uh, they say it's really painful. They shoot the dye up in the bladder or up in the ureter, see where it's near with like a uh, live action x-ray so they can see real time what's going on. Uh, they get their pictures and then they flush it out so they don't let it sit in your bladder. Um, yeah, it, it does suck that I have the issues. Um, it has, it took five months for the last process from when we realized that it was uh, blocked to get my kidney unblocked, get all the tests, get all the doctors together because for the reconstructive surgery, it takes my regular doctor um, a reconstructive specialist. There's one, there's 20 in the entire country. And the only one in Georgia happens to be like two hours away. Um, but he is literally the guy that wrote the book on how to do it, uh, the more modern way. Um, so he's the best at what he does. So I love that. I love that that's who I get. get. Not one of the people he's trained in the past, but the guy that actually does the training. Um, he's also one of the head specialists in the country in robotic surgery and trains other kidney doctors. Ooh, I hear in the Amazon delivery if you heard that noise. <laughs> Letting me know that I had a delivery. Yay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he is literally the doctor that teaches robotic surgery. He's out of, I want to say Tuff University, um, somewhere up north. Um, I'm, I'm a Georgia girl. I have no idea where Tuff University is. <laughs> a northern state. Um, so yeah, he's the doctor that heads all of their yarder reconstructive, um, studies that they do on like what methods work best and yada 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 um and he is the guy like i said that wrote the book on how to do it so i'm glad he's you know he's not actually on in my insurance um that's the the fun part but they have no choice <laughs> he's the only one in georgia that can do the surgery and then they have to have a doctor that can harvest buccal buccal cheek material. Uh, so it takes three specialists and I had to not use my usual hospital. Um, I'm in the suburbs of Atlanta, uh, the northern area, 
Um, and I actually had to go to the Midtown Hospital um, to get my surgery because that was kind of like in between all the doctors. One of the doctors, the one that harvests the cheek stuff, works out of that hospital. And then my doctor's up north and the other doctor's down south. So it's like the middle meeting point. Um, and then that way the other doctor would, wouldn't have to stay in a hotel and all the craziness that goes along with that. Um, but yeah, so Monday I find out once I wake up, um, exactly what type of surgery. Hopefully they're not going to say that, oh, it really wasn't affected, uh, cause I'm in pain. So I know there's something wrong, but there is a chance that I have to wait for it to get worse and just live with it. Um, until I can have the same procedure again to find out how bad it is. Um, and then finally have the surgeries. So hopefully it, they automatically see that they're, what's wrong and they know exactly what to do and we can hop on this because it taking four months just to get into surgery last time was a bit ridiculous to me. Um, I understand all the tests that have to be done and coordination and it taking six weeks to get all the doctors together. Uh, yeah. So I have no idea how my channel is going to go. I'm going to try to, now that I know that, you know, I'm going to have some issues coming up. I'm going to try to do more of the live events and have guests on um, a lot more of the easier toys um, because building big stuff really takes it out of me right now. Um, and bending over hurts. So doing things like the cat wheel did, it sucked, <laughs> to be honest. It took probably around eight hours to make the cat wheel. Because of course I have to make commentary, I have to pause and make sure that the camera shots are right and that everything's working and then once I built it and tried it out with a cat, I needed to redesign a little bit of it and you know, there's another hour, but like the first day of filming, um, it was really two days um, because you know, I have to be a mom too. Um, so, but all together, just making the initial wheel was about eight hours that I filmed. Um, so that's not easy. Um, and luckily the kidney was just starting to have issues when I made the wheel. So I'm going to try to stick to some easier toys, like the cute little cherry. <laughs> it's the little things that make you just happy some days. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, I, I do eat along with a kidney happy diet. Um, my doctor was uh, encouraged by me doing Atkins right now. Um, I, I'm probably the only person in the world that can do Atkins for eight weeks. Count all my, like I have the Atkins app, so I keep log of everything. I do it exactly how they say, in and down five pounds in eight weeks. My husband's down like 17. His six packs back. <laughs> I hate him. But with all my medical issues and being on medications that cause weight gain and having different diseases that cause weight gain, um, I guess I'm losing something that counts. Um, and he said that the Atkins is actually kidney friend friendly. Um, and I drink lots of water, um, which my kidney does not really care for at the moment. Like 30 seconds after chugging water, my kidney starts to throb. I was like, did you know it? transfers through that quickly <laughs> like it's really amazing um talking with my hands I'm propping my elbows up to try to help some but I I'm a person that likes to use my hands when talking not just because I'm on here with you but that's just I'm a spaz um and waving my hands around does make the kidney hurt <laughs> go figure uh, I feel like I'm whining a lot to you but I don't mean to I'm just oops, shaking the desk a lot um, just letting you know what is going on, giving you another update. Um, that's why I made the little video of how to do the toy. I started with that. That way I could kind of just talk to you all, let you know what's going on. I am going to try to keep the channel going and hopefully not miss any more weeks because it killed me going six weeks twice in between making videos. Um, I'm just, I've got too creative of, of a brain, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, I, I'm always 
making something around the house to make something work better or changing things. Um, oh, I do have a question for you all. And I'd love to know in the comments below if you're watching all this. If I started designing quirky cat shirts, would you want to buy them? Um, my husband's channel, I've learned to screen print. I, um, if you saw my guest that I had before that makes the kitty cat whisker jewelry, her husband does screen printing. And I follow him on Facebook and YouTube and, or not YouTube, um, Instagram. And I started watching him doing the screen printing. He does a lot of stuff on the paper screen printing wise, but he does do some shirts and stuff and kitty cat jackets that are the cutest jean jackets ever. Um, but I was inspired by watching him. I was like, I think I could make stuff for my husband. Um, that way we could be changing things often and not buy tons of things in bulk of pre-printed shirts and then find out no one liked that idea. So I could print just a few and see what happens. And then maybe if we needed to order in bulk, we could do that. But that way I could change things up easily. So I, I have learned to screen print. It has been an interesting week because yes, again, again Kitty doesn't, doesn't like screen printing. printing. But, but I, I was, was hell bent and determined. <laughs> so, uh, would you all be interested in having some quirky cat lady shirts or cat, uh, oh, yes, you love the shirts. <laughs> and keep shirts even better. Um, yeah, if you've seen his, uh, we, there's a Nut Nation shirt that we just did, and I farted my wetsuit with bubbles coming up from his butt, <laughs> and the bubbles that says Nut Life. Um, yeah, those are all, we have a stockpile waiting in our garage. Our little stock room is being built up. There is other stuff coming for his side of the things if you all follow him too. Like Adventures with Nug in UG. Um, my, the koala, I wish I had my purse nearby. The koala that some of you have seen that I have made um, just a drawing of and it had Nug life on the butt and like his friend has a giraffe because He's really tall. Mm. Um, like, we took the koala, and it is now a rubber keychain that's going to be coming out. We have water bottles, and waterproof phone cases, and just a lot of cool merchandise that we're working on. We're waiting for the rest to make it here. Um, <laughs> he thought of a golf ball coming out of his butt. Up close, you can see it in that light. I promise. <laughs> But, but it could, could be golf balls. He, he finds them every single day. Doesn't matter, matter what body of water he's in, lake, river, pond, he, he finds golf balls. <laughs> it, he, he probably has sees more golf balls than actual wild, wildlife. I'm telling you. Uh, he is out today playing with my kids in the river. That's why it's so quiet in the house. Um, and, and the, the kittens, kittens are asleep, so it makes it really quiet. But, um, yeah, he is out in the river playing with them. Um, he's hoping to maybe find some arrowheads, because that is the area that we're in. And, uh, I bet you he's going to bring golf balls back. If so, I'll make him put it on his, uh, Instagram. I promise. Or Facebook. But, yeah. So, that is kind of where we are. Have I been talking for a long time? It feels like. Yeah, 15 minutes, that's all. Um, I think I was made to never shut up, actually, but... <laughs> mm. And if you have any cat events that you go to in your area, or you have been to or that you know of happen, you should shoot them an email and tell them that the cat toy lady should be coming to their event. Um, I really want to start just kind of educating people on the fact that they can't make their own toys. What's safe? Don't let the cat scratching on stuff behind you if you can hear it. Um, <laughs> my big, um, if you've seen that double window, uh, catio that attaches to the window that I made, it's actually, like, right beside me. 
So the cat's coming in and out of the window, there's a scratcher next to it, that way they can set it more nicely. Um, so yeah, that's what you hear is cat mom life. <laughs> and uh, so if you know of any cat events, you, you should shoot them a nice little email and say that you'd love to see me there. I think I'm finally getting to the point where I'm big enough that they may be interested, um, and I'd love to go to them. Um, and if you haven't been to a cat event when they start up, because I think September is when a lot of them are going to start, you you need to go. If there is one year you were, even if you want to make a fun trip out of it, like a cat con in Pasadena, California. Um, whenever they decided to open up, it's like 20,000 people is how many they got last, uh, the last year they were open, so two years ago. And it is cat everything. Jackson Galaxy's there, uh, of course it's in Pasadena, so lots of celebrities show up. There are cat dressing contests, so people dress up as cats and have cat themed everything on. Oh, wait, my shirt. I, I mean, I think I actually wore the shirt at a few different cat cons. It's the cutest shirt ever, let me just say. Let me just... Let's see if I can show you. It has a bow. It has a like, bow on that. And it's the cutest thing. Really good in person. And because of the way it hangs from you being a fluffier girl, it hides all indiscretions. Too bad that Atkins diet has made me lose weight. Well, kind of about nine weeks. You, have, you would think... It would help. But this is how life goes with me. I can do calorie restriction, uh, Atkins, you name it. My body just likes to hold on to weight. As long as I'm not gaining weight, that's the best. And I am slowly losing weight, you know, like a pound every two weeks. <laughs> it's not enough for me. But, um, yeah, maybe eventually I can see a skinnier size. <laughs> It might take surgery for that one. Mommy makeover. Alright, so let's see. Make sure I haven't missed any comments. Doesn't look like it. So, I am going to wrap things up. There we go. Our cherry, the cutest cat toy. And just to go back to the beginning, um... Oh, oh, yep, your, your phone's, phone's dying. dying. <laughs> um, don't worry, I'm going to wrap things up. Thank you for hanging out with me today, or re-watching if, if that is what you're doing. Hopefully this was informative on how to make a toy, and some things are coming up, and I swear, as soon as I get a cat that weighs more than a pound, um, that will run on my cat wheel, I will get it out to you. Um, kittens playing on it with it is barely moving with two of them on it. It's kind of like slides. Um, that's not quite enough. I think people want to see a cat actually walking on it. So, when that happens, because I can't make it to any of the open room cat shelters yet, because most of them aren't open for people to come in because of COVID. Um, so that kind of messed up that plan. But as soon as I get a cat that has grown big enough for the cat a little to work, I will get that video out to you. Um, it is super sturdy. It's working really well. You know when kids are on it. Um, <laughs> I know it's sturdiness. And it's like, I think 76 bucks was the total for cost of everything to make it. So yeah, that's it. And as I always say, now go make your 